for me, the two words that keep coming back to are epic and intimate, which on the surface sound kind of contradictory, uh, but to me, they perfectly sum up the music. I think that a lot of this project was really about trying to do something a lot bigger thematically and conceptually than we'd ever done before, whilst at the same time really trying to maintain a sense of something very personal to us. Really, the intention of this project was for us to write more meaningful and purposeful music and also to kind of challenge ourselves really to write music driven by narrative and story. Our previous releases never really had a concrete theme or concept behind them really. We only started to think about the meaning behind it and the themes once the music was actually finished. So it's very different because in the past we would just write songs that sound cool for the sake of making cool songs. Um, but this time we wanted to fit every song around a very specific part of the story that we'd written. And we wanted it to be about the time of our lives from Polychrome until now. So we've had a lot of personal development since then. For me and I think for Jim as well, like we both try to look for things that give us more meaning in our lives and try to live more healthily and just, just try and do things that enrich our lives in a more wholesome way. Um, so we wanted to include a lot of that in the story and the narrative. It's inspired by a lot of things, partly by our love of sci-fi and cinema. Um, but I think underlying that, like Will said, uh, was writing something that was personal to our own personal journeys. You know, I think when we were younger, we were both, uh, we both lived life quite isolated and quite disconnected from from everything in our lives, including ourselves to a certain extent. Um, and that's definitely reflected in the, the two main characters' journeys as they start off extremely isolated and kind of undergo this metamorphosis, I guess, into uh, becoming more open and ultimately letting go of a lot of the fears and anxieties that they've been holding on to. Yeah, I think it's like a, a really important thing in life to find that adventurous path to overcome anxiety because it's the, the only real way to overcome those fears is to just throw yourself into the world and try new things. So that's what we try to write into the characters. So in the story, there's a character, Riker, who lives in this kind of prison-like room, like most of the humans there. That was quite similar to <laughs> how I lived a few years ago and how a lot of people live where you're just in a room on a computer and you're just in an endless cycle of going to bed, going back to your computer. And I know me personally, I developed this sense of nihilism where nothing really felt meaningful and it was hard to really see the point of day-to-day -day life when you're just doing the same endless thing every day. So we, we wrote a lot of that into the story where humanity as a whole have just developed this kind of chaotic sense of nihilism. To me, the Ardor, which are the native beings in the story, they kind of represent this really fundamental, grounded wisdom that they've kind of cultivated over a huge lifespan. And um, I really like that idea of this, this kind of deep wisdom that can be possessed through like a simple way of living. And um, for myself, moving to Canada, Last year, I've been really inspired by um, learning more about indigenous cultures and traditions and um, seeing how they live kind of very simple lives in unison and harmony with surroundings and the land. Ilko is the concept artist who's done all of the artwork for the album. We found his work online and were really drawn to it because he has this kind of really grungy feel to a lot of the work that we felt like would really suit the world that we were imagining and writing about. Working on this project was, in a certain way, a new experience. Mostly because each illustration had to accompany a specific track on the album. I've never created art for music before, so that added another dimension to my regular workflow. Besides the more obvious elements that go into each picture and that support the storyline, you're also, in a way, trying to capture the mood of the music. And then, of course, hopefully in a way, that Jim and Will see it as well. 
Jim and Will sent me some demo versions early on of all the tracks, and the first thing I did was listen to that a couple of times to get acquainted with the music, before even picking up a pen. Because of the nature and depth of the music, images start forming in your head right away by just listening to the music. So for me, that was a great way to start the project, as well as kickstart my imagination. During the work itself, I would also often listen to the music. I felt it helped me to get into a certain mood, and hopefully that resulted in illustrations that convey feelings that support the music. The first part of the process is always the most interesting part to me. The first discussions about what should be in the plates to the actual finished line art. It's still a, a big challenge to come up with something that lives up to that vision. We knew we wanted to find a concept artist who uh, was really well versed with science fiction. But I think for me, one of the things that kind of sets him apart from some other artists is he brings a very human feel to uh, all of his work. Um, you know, it's all hand drawn um, and he works in 2D as well. And coming from industrial design backgrounds, he really places a lot of importance on composition. So uh, just beginning each piece with uh, black and white values before uh, thinking about color later in the process. My favorite piece to work on was Play 01 intro. It has so many elements that I enjoy doing myself. It has skill and depth. It has a dystopian sci-fi world with lots of small details, a very bold dominant color. These are all things I enjoy uh, when I'm creating my own personal pieces as well. So this was really a blast to do. It's probably my favorite track on the album. Oh, 08 Reflection is another favorite of mine. It's totally different than 01. Here the challenge was in trying to communicate this planet with pretty abstract shapes and colors. It's a totally different workflow as well having almost no line art with regards to the planet. This is a much more experimental workflow, just seeing what works and what doesn't, and then trying to turn it into the illusion of a planet. With a lot of science fiction and um, futuristic technological themes, it's easy to like become very separated from the human qualities of the story, right? And so we knew that um, we wanted to kind of keep things uh, grounded and feeling like very uh, organic at the same time as, um, you know, technological and futuristic. So it's always refreshing and fun to do, really rewarding to see them being used in the context of this music album. And besides the remarkable music on this album, the story itself is intriguing, heartfelt, as well as very relevant for these times we live in, which adds to me greatly to the appeal of the project. One of the narrative arcs that um, is evident in the story uh, is this transition through chaos into meaning and purpose. And we really wanted to uh, figure out a way to uh, mirror that in the music as well. Um, so we really wanted to convey a sense of chaos and randomness at the start of the album and for that to transition into music that was more, uh, more purposeful and more intentional towards the end. We chose the piano and the cello as uh, the two instruments that we really wanted to focus the album around. Um, because as well as being very versatile, they also capture a lot of emotion. And so we knew that if we started with recordings of the piano and the cello, those would really set the emotional tone um, for all of the music. Yeah, and it also has that very intimate feel. If you, if you just have two main instruments that you build everything around, then you can maintain that very close feeling. I've played the piano for um, since I was quite young. I come from a classical background, but in the last few years, I've kind of taught myself how to improvise and uh, I really started to find my own voice uh, and my own style through just simply playing. Really the genesis of the writing process for this album was um, a series of piano improvisations that I recorded, um, really kind of soft and intimate. And we then passed those piano recordings over to Oliver, who's the cellist on this project. 
he was great to work with because we approached him just with the idea of getting a few cello recordings at the beginning. He made some himself, just improvising. And we used those improvised recordings along with what Jim made with the piano. And we started building out ideas and sketches just from those two sets of recordings from the cello and the piano. We could try playing over it, like loop it twice yeah. and then cut it out and yeah. you could just then go free from. Yeah. That's, that sounds good. That's an option. My name is Oliver, I play the cello on this project. Um, I've been playing for a few of the recording sessions, uh, just like improvising and some melodic lines and things. First of all, just being in the studio with Karen Sound is an absolute highlight for me. Um, but then from there onwards, just uh, seeing or hearing what they do with the stuff that we record. Because um, some of the stuff I did at home as well, um, literally just recording loops and sending it to them. And they're really good at cutting it up and putting into new stuff, uh, so to get that back and to hear how they've... I barely recognise my own playing sometimes, so to hear that is, is pretty cool. We booked a few studio days so that we could really get into the more interesting techniques and ways to record cello. Um, but that also involved a lot of experimentation on Oliver's part. So I asked Oliver to play the cello in different ways as well and even hit it, so he let me hit his cello with various beaters and with my hand. Uh, so that made that made its way onto the track Voices of Descent, which is a track purely made with cello. So we wanted to kind of challenge ourselves to just use those cello recordings in that track. When I was listening in, it was yeah fascinating to hear again that thing of like I'm doing one thing in here and he's completely changing it and it's got no resemblance at all, but he's making these really interesting sounds out of it. We did a bunch of like melodic takes and that was fine, but then I could feel there was a bit of maybe frustration from having to play kind of specific me melodies and notes all the time. So I asked him to go full experimental and I, I think my note to him was think pure horror film, just go crazy and like do anything. He pitched the low string down as well. So you get that really intense low raspiness and definitely my favorite take from everything he did because you can feel like the visceral feeling as he's playing. <laughs> You play over a certain loop for about an hour and it's kind of, you, you sort of really get into it and then just seeing how they dissect what you've done uh, with that one hour and make it into this amazing actual usable thing is, uh, is quite fascinating. It was important for us to work with someone that is good with experimenting and trying new things and Oliver was great for that because we had a bunch of ideas and we asked him to do it a bunch of different things and he was really up for it. I still have to pinch myself a few times. It's the biggest thing I've ever worked on and I don't, you know, it's not something I usually do. Um, it feels, it, it feels very surreal. In a way it feels really comfortable and almost normal um, just because of how amazing it is to work with Cone Sound and how easy it is. But every time I sit down and sort of think about what I'm doing, it's, uh, yeah, it's quite something. I've been listening to their stuff for, you know, for three years to sort of be a part of it now, it's amazing. Some of the themes in the story allude to a society that has really lost a lot of its humanity uh, due to this kind of relentless technological progress. And, um, we wanted to reflect that in how we use the piano and the cello. So uh, we used a lot of distortion and modular processing to kind of reflect how the, uh, the humanity and the more organic elements are kind of corrupted or changed or shape-shifted and augmented into something completely different. I built a little modular setup, mainly of distortion units and filters, and we wanted to put everything through it and do a lot of experimentation that way. Uh, especially at the first part of the album, because we wanted that grungy, kind of futuristic 
you, you want to hear the electricity, basically. We did it in a studio called J&J &J Studios. Uh, Jim Barr is the owner of that studio. He's the well, former bassist of Porter's Head. He was great to work with because he really encouraged the experimental nature of the album. Hello. Hey. Oh, that's good. Sounds great in here. Awesome. Um, yeah, I think we're ready to go. Should we just start with that list of C things? Let's do that. Cool. Yeah. My name's Jim Barr and my role in this project is as a recording engineer. The highlights have been setting up uh, interesting audio experiments to, to try and make uh, some new and unexpected sounds with cellos and other instruments. And we uh, got some of the, the studio reverbs involved and we got the pedal board involved and got kind of dirty with it all and um, made, a, made, made a nasty noise with the cello, which was really fun. Being surprised by the, the sounds that we've found uh, or, or uh, Will's, Will's found it's exciting that how extreme he's he's interested in going with with the sounds. It's, it's fun. After the first day, he kind of realised how experimental it was, and he started pushing more effects towards us. And he, he was like, oh, "Maybe you want to use this. Maybe you can use this." We we did a lot of like tape recordings where we were bending the tape as it was playing and stuff like that. And he just had a bunch of gear lying around, like uh, plate reverbs and uh, distortion pedals. So we had loads of crazy setups where Oliver was playing and I was doing a bunch of tweaking as he was playing, which was really fun because it, it added that human element to the performances and to things like distortion that previously we've never done because usually it's hours and hours of sitting on a computer and tweaking. Um, but this just felt a lot more organic and human, which is a big part of the album. Mm. And we were lucky enough to get a few recordings from him, which is awesome. I thought stand-up bass looks a bit like a cello, why don't we have one of those as well? <laughs> and, and there was one in the corner of the room, so it seemed, seemed rude not to invite it into the, into the mix somewhere. I think the experimentation and, and the a actually using real, real instruments and tr trying to make sounds themselves rather than it being um, samples and synth-based stuff, I think that's quite a sort of uh, admirable quest and that, that you know it's, it's 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 really working you know it, it doesn't sound like the generic kind of electronic music thing it's got a, another dimension because the instruments are manipulated from real sounds it's, it's good At the same time Will was doing that, I was recording in Canada, uh, in Calgary, Western Canada, at Studio Bell, which is this just incredible facility full of these like really, really historic instruments um, spanning back decades. And they just have this amazing museum collection full of rare instruments and studio gear. But the amazing thing about it is um, you can hire the space and use all of this gear and instruments. So this one, or this one? So this is the 67, that's the, yeah, right. the bomb factory? Yeah. And then this is, yeah, the U47 that came from Yo Young's collection. I recorded on two different pianos. I recorded firstly on a, an amazing big um, Yamaha grand piano, a concert grand. And uh, that has this big, epic, cinematic, kind of bold feeling to it. Um, but to contrast that, we also recorded on a much more kind of understated and delicate Steinway upright, uh, which had a very soft sound to it. And I played that very, very gently. Um, so again, yeah, just reflecting these themes of like being very uh, big and cinematic, but also maintaining really a sense of vulnerability at the same time. I also used a pipe organ for the last track. Um, and we knew that we wanted the last track to be this big explosion and kind of uh, ultimate moment. And we thought that the organ would be a perfect uh, instrument for that because of the grandeur and the majesty of it and just how like big and powerful 
uh, it is. And also, you know, the associations um, with religion and um, feeling of celestial grandeur almost, I think. I worked with Eric, one of the engineers there, and he was really great to work with because not only does he have such a great knowledge of the collection there, but um, I could also rely on him for really creative input. Can I just do one more take getting a few more notes? Sure, I'll throw the, um, I'm gonna throw the spring in your headphones as well, just so you can hear the sustain of that. My name is Eric Sinem and I'm the audio engineer or one of the audio engineers here at the National Music Center, Studio Bell. Uh, my role in the project was helping Jim record um, piano and a few of the other keyboard instruments um, for the record. One of the coolest aspects of this project to me so far um, has been Jim's approach to taking uh, these more traditional classical designed and built instruments and integrating them into more contemporary modern electronic music. So taking a source that's very natural, but in the process of recording it, you know, manipulating that sound and making it a little more contemporary. There were certain sounds that I really wanted to pursue and obtain, and he always knew the best way to achieve those sounds. I was kind of manipulating the feedback of the, the space echo while Jim was playing that part over, I, I believe the track was Temple, um, and just, you know, every once in a while you find the right spot and the right delay time and the right amount of intensity and feedback and just kind of snapped into place and kind of allowed that triplet feedback fill to start kind of filling in the parts. And Jim's got such great wherewithal um, as a pianist that he really, uh, you know, was playing off of that effect and made it part of um, his intention in, in the piece. So that was, that was a pretty neat little moment as well. I feel that this project is probably the most ambitious thing that we've done artistically, but also the most cohesive. You know, if I look back at all of our previous releases, I can kind of see the through line between all of them. But for me, um, this project more than any other really stands alone and has this kind of quite unique um, vibe and aesthetic to it. And so um, I'm really proud of the fact that we, we managed to achieve that. But also the fact that we, we really set out to challenge ourselves to write music driven by themes and narrative. Um, and that was something we'd never done before. So we've wanted to score films for years and um, that's such a big goal of ours. I think we've proven to ourselves at the very least that we are able to do that. Yeah, it was very satisfying to try so many new things in one project and to actually follow through on every single one of them until the finish. Um, Literally every part was something someone we haven't tried before, like the way we wrote it, the, the style of the tracks in some of them anyway, and it was very, very fulfilling in that sense. I also feel like we've genuinely evolved in a lot of ways. I think it's probably the most satisfying thing you can do as an artist is evolve and push things forward. And I feel like we have done that, so mm. I'm, well, I think we're both really proud of it. It was also really satisfying making music with intent and trying to go closer to making art, like meaningful art, as opposed to writing, kind of making silly sounds for the sake of it. Which, you know, there is an art to making stupid bass sounds. I, I personally love doing that, but I, I do feel like we've made like an art, like a piece of art as, a, you know, as opposed to just a bunch of tracks. So that's really satisfying. Mm, yeah, I think, I think I'm also proud of the fact that uh, we've made another album the album is very important to us both individually uh, so it's something we very much believe in and um, yeah just proud that we're still kind of putting our energy into uh, into making them yeah we have already started talking about the next album and i'm pretty excited about it actually it's going to be very different yeah, yeah it <laughs> sorry <laughs> did i ru just ruin that <laughs> Sorry, that was a beautiful, candid moment. I wanted to keep that going. <laughs> Both like so, yeah. <laughs>